Welcome to Automa Chef, a new game out on Steam. It was available a couple of days ago. I thought I'd give this a go. Saw an article on Rock Paper Shotgun, so I thought, well, why don't we take a look? It is a game about automation, of course, and being on this channel, and is also about preparing food, but um, isn't designed to cause arguments like something like Overcooked, for instance. So we have Automa Chef. It is around about £10 on Steam, and of course I did purchase it. I didn't get a free key or anything for this, so it is my money, uh, well, you know, provided by you watching adverts going into this, and let's get started with the campaign. So uh, I've done the first couple of missions, which are just tutorials, uh, these two basic tutorials, and we'll start with this. This one, the first taste. We need to deliver 10 meals and keep the electricity usage under 500 watt hours. Don't worry about that too much. It's just a counter and it will count up. And we need to keep it under 500. We also need to use fewer than 40 ingredients. That tends to be the toughest thing if you set the things up wrong. Let's get started. And I'll show you, well, <laughs> we'll see if I succeed or not. I've not really actually succeeded with this yet, but let's see. We have to do these. These are our actual objectives. And then at the bottom, we have two different recipes. We have a plain burger. That's sort of terrible. It looks awful. <laughs> and a cheeseburger, which is slightly better. Uh, doesn't have any salad on there or any tomato. But other than that, we have two different burgers. So let's get started. And here is our helpful friend who wants to take over the world by preparing food. Um, yes. Let's just ignore what you say. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now on the left hand side, we've got things we can construct and then we've got a layout. And it's a grid layout, straightforward, you might think. So we've got to think about how to actually lay out our factory. So let's work backwards from what we want to produce. We can produce things using an assembler. These are the things that actually create the recipes and they cost five grand each. We only have a budget of 50 grand, so we can't have to be a little bit careful. And uh, we're going to just put them, say, something like there and there. Because we're producing two different recipes, you do need two different assemblers. Okay? And we can configure each one. So this one is going to be um, cheeseburger. Um, well, let's put the plain burger on the top and click OK. And this one is going to be the cheeseburger on the bottom and click OK. Right. Now that we've got that going, we need to feed stuff into them to basically get let it get started. Now, uh, dispensers will dispense raw ingredients, processors will process that, grills will obviously cook, but to get actually anything put into these, um, we're going to need robotic arms. And there are two kinds, dumb and smart. Smart is for when it shouldn't just grab anything from in front of it and move it forward. Think of it like a filter inserter in Factorio, if you play Factorio. Otherwise, dumb will just be grab whatever it can. So for instance, uh, for dispensers, we can just go with dumb because it's just going to grab, uh, so rotate this, it's just going to grab the buns from the dispenser where we're going to put it. And let's just put them both there. And then maybe we just try it like this first of all. Okay. And both of these dispensers are going to dispense burger buns. Okay. So they're going to be picked up immediately and put into our assembler. Now, right now, there is no limits. This will keep on producing burger buns, and this will keep on actually trying to feed them into the assembler. If the assembler's already got stuff in it, it'll start putting on these little plates in front of the assembler. If I zoom in, you'll see those little plates. And if that fills up, then, well, basically, remember when I said you can only use 40 ingredients? Well, it'll easily use those up. So, we've got to think about other ways to do this. Um, do we also want the cheeseburger? Let's just see. Um, yeah, so the cheeseburger... Um, is going to be this is this bottom one? Yeah. So we're actually going to put a... Let's just see. What do I actually want here? I'm going to put a robotic arm, let's say, there. A smart version. Okay. And behind that, I'm going to put a grill. The grill is there to basically cook food. This, I'm going to configure to only pick up um, basically the cooked patties for the burgers. If you don't do that, if something on this side puts the uh, raw burger on, this will immediately pick it up and happily push it onto the next part of the chain. Then we've got a conveyor belt. And I don't think they automatically can go into the assembler, so we're going to need another dumb robotic arm. I suppose you might also be able to get away with the conveyor belt pointing downwards. I'm not sure if a robotic arm can actually, you know, grab from two different directions. I didn't think it could, but uh, that's just something to be a little bit aware of. Also, at the moment, I don't think we have any splitters, so I think we're going to have to do two parallel things. Uh, or maybe not, actually. 
Um. Well, yeah, let's just start with two parallel and we'll see whether we can actually make some savings later. So another grill. Another robotic arm, smart. And then uh, we just make sure that this is also set to the same thing. Cooked patty. Okay. And then let's just go for two more conveyor belts. Now you might wonder why I've got these conveyor belts. Why I just don't have these two right next to over here. Well, we could in the case of this top one. Uh, that wouldn't have any problems and be slightly cheaper. But this just looks a little bit nicer and we can optimize perhaps a little bit later. I'm not sure if you get your money back if you destroy stuff. So I just want to be a little bit laying this out kind of nice and we'll, we'll try to beat the, the record later. We're also going to want another dispenser. And that's why I've laid it out like this, because I'm going to lay this dispenser right there. And this is going to... And I'm not sure if dispensers actually can just feed um, conveyor belt. Let's just try a conveyor belt right there. Let's see if this actually feeds. Because this conveyor... This dispen... Oh, in fact, no. Oh, that needs to be... Oh, I'm going to need to move this. Uh, or maybe not. Let's just try with that. Let's put that over there for now. Let's try a food processor. And I want to put that right here. Okay, the processor will automatically process whatever we put into it. In this case, I'm going to tell it to make cheese. So the cheese is going to come out of the dispenser, get processed into a slice. It's going to hit this conveyor belt, hopefully, which is going to go this way. So too should be the cooked patties coming from both of these. And then on the other side, we're going to want dispensers. And I think that's going to be something like this. So we're going to need two dispensers. And robotic arm and dumb. They don't need to be smart whatsoever. That's 34 grand. Each of these is going to dispense just raw patties. Uh, okay. Now that's set up. Now if I start this, what's going to happen is all of the ingredients are just going to keep on going all the way through the system. It's not going to stop. It's not going to respond to the orders that are coming in. So what we have to do is basically uh, add an order reader. And we can put this wherever we like, but I'm going to put it down here for now. And I'm going to put, I think, three of them. Um, and then we'll give that a go. What you can do with an order reader is basically say, if there's an order in the system, do this thing. So I'm going to take this one on the right hand side. And I'm going to tell it, uh, we're concerned only with uh, cheeseburgers. Okay. And what I want to do is connect this to our assembler. Okay. I'm going to connect it also to this dispenser. And this dispenser. And this one. Okay, so it's, it's connected to all of the ingredients for one cheeseburger. And then we're just going to tell it to only do one thing. So, oops, um, perform one action, uh, one action, perform action one times on new order. Okay, uh, I'm also, uh, oh, I can't actually connect this to grill. Uh, I've only got four connections. Uh, we'll come back to the grill in a second. Right, so, uh, yeah, that's fine. So I just want to set these others to the same thing. Perform action one times. And let's see how well this works. Okay. Second one, I'm going to use the plain burger. I'm going to do a very, very similar thing. I'm going to connect to this thing. I'm going to connect to this dispenser. I'm going to connect to this. And you can't connect these order readers to more than one. Uh, so two of these order readers to the same item. So that's sort of the um, uh, limitation of them. Okay. So in each case, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Perform action one time. Perform action one time. And the same thing there. Okay. So all of these have now got crisscross wires basically telling it what to actually do to try and limit this so that we only dispense one ingredient per order. This last one, we're just going to connect, uh, and it's going to take both types of order. And in this one, I'm going to connect it to both grills, okay? And in the grills, we're going to say on while order is pending. And because I'm detecting both orders, they're both going to... If either of the orders... Well, hopefully this is how it works. If either of those orders are actually in the system, it should have the grills on. Otherwise, the grills are going to be off. Okay. Lastly, we're going to want some conveyor belts. And, oh no, there goes my budget. <laughs> okay. And the robotic order uh, would go here. And they would just feed whatever comes out. Uh, you could, I guess, put... Um, well, maybe they would grab other stuff. But, yeah, let's just leave them as dumb. And you'll see what that's the cost. Let's just see if this actually works. Oh, over budget. Okay, remove some machines. 
Well, why don't we just uh, get rid of this order reader? Um, yeah, let's just get rid of you. And that's cheaper. That does mean, however, the grills are on permanently. That's using up power. But it is under 50 grand. Let's start. So you see by default, we're using power all the time because the grills are on. Uh, but an order should pop up here. And when it does, everything should kick into action. <laughs> Who knows? Come on, let's fast forward. They've got the people into the restaurant. Okay. Now, you'll see there's two plain burgers and one cheeseburger. So let's go into normal time. That's going to start cooking the burgers. Only when they're cooked, they get grabbed. And the cheese automatically gets output from this dispenser based on the number of orders for cheese. Okay. So plain burgers goes up there. There we go. And there's our first cheeseburger. And more orders are coming in. So our energy used is still, well, it's about halfway, still okay. But you'll see our ingredients used is only 17. If you didn't have these order readers, that would probably already be heading towards 40. So loads of wastage, which we don't want. And there we go. More orders. Let's fast forward this. Okay. And the energy used, that's become worrying. Oh, no. Success. Okay. 431 watt hours. Money spent is two and a half grand less than our budget. And ingredients used is 35 instead of 40. We've achieved everything. So that's nice. And efficiency is 51%. Um, yep, so we, we didn't have the budget to really try and um, <laughs> to optimize this anymore, but it's good for now. So that's the kind of base of the game. And if you are aware of a developer called Zactronics, um, there's a number of games, you can go look them up on Steam. It may uh, remind you of those games. Uh, this isn't actually a Zactronics game. Um, this is uh, someone else entirely. I forget the name of them, but they're on Steam, obviously. But very, very similar kind of thing. Um, the object is often to optimize. So once you've got things working, you may want to then uh, make it working more efficiently, or you can get it to run efficiency or cheaper, but probably not both at the same time. All right, so now we've got the next challenge. <laughs> Lettuce apparently is a challenge, and uh, that's a different challenge, challenge altogether. Let's start. So, uh, we just need to make one recipe, that's good. So let's get started with this. Those burgers were a success, the public was ecstatically indifferent towards them, which is normal for the burger look like, that looked like that. Give me feedback such as, yes, it had taste, and stop asking me questions and leave me alone. Uh, yep, okay. Fine. Give me the challenge. It's a BLT sandwich, okay. Right, so we've got all the same kind of things. Uh, if we have a BLT, we have limited space. That's the main problem it looks like with this. So why don't we just see how we can actually do this. So let's try and put it here. Because uh, we're going to need at least the, um, the robotic arm done. And that's the kind of minimum space that this occupies. We could put it here and rotate and get some more space going this way, but then we didn't have any we don't have any space down here to actually feed stuff onto these necessarily. Well we might be able to if we only had we had to do an L robot arm, which is possible. But um, let's see if we can do it this way first of all, and we'll have to redo that later. So recipes to follow is a BLT, only option. And as you might imagine, there's probably a few different things. So we can click up here to get the recipe. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so we've got to turn bread slices into toasted bread slices. Tomatoes and tomato slices. So that's going to be a, um, a food processor and just lettuce feeding straight in. So maybe both of those two middle two can be combined along one route because you can only get two things. There's only two spaces to actually insert things into each assembler. So you've got to have only two lines, if you like, going into it. So maybe both of those and then maybe these toasted bread slices and the crispy bacon strips. I wonder if they can go on uh, just one grill or if they have to go on two separate grills. Let's go and see what we can do. Uh, so the top one um, let's see, how can we actually lay this out to be nice? <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be problematic. 
Um, why don't we see if we can feed stuff in from over here and then come back around this way to use this kind of space? Which means using some kind of L. So if we just have a robotic arm dumb going here, and we can right click it and configure it to go. Um, is it going to be right? Uh, I think. <laughs> reconfigure it if not. And then our conveyor belt can go, come, come, come this way. Okay. And how are we going to feed it onto that conveyor belt? Well, we need to have lettuce, which can go, go straight on there. And then that needs to be fed in by some sort of, um, hmm, some sort of uh, robot. Yeah, and we've got to process something else. So, how are we going to actually get this in place? So let's try that initially. We've got this one just producing our tomatoes. Okay. And this one is just going to produce our lettuce. Good. And you'll notice for each of these, we can change the number of seconds between ingredients, but also on the conveyor belts, you can change the speed settings of these to whatever you like. You can slow them down. That may help. So it may be some of the ways to actually lower the cost or lower the or increase the efficiency is just by timing the belts rather than doing anything smart. I uh, don't know. Haven't tried it yet. Anyway, that should be the, uh, the tomato line. Uh, we'll get maybe an order reader and put that over here. Okay, and this order reader is going to detect BLT. Yeah, and just connect it to each of these two. And for each of these, it's going to basically just tell it to dispense one. Um, whoops, order reader also dispense one for you. Right, so that's the, the middle section of this. Now we're going to see what we can do about the other one. So we're going to need a, a robot that's definitely needed. So that can go there. And then we just need to sort of combine um, toast. <laughs> Is it toast? Toasted bread slice. BLT doesn't need toast. Honestly, you can have bacon and lettuce tomato sandwich. Anyway, we need two of them and we need one bacon strips. The bacon strips going to be the easiest one of those. Uh, but we should be OK otherwise. So let's just um, let's just feed this out. If we have a grill, and we feed it uh, here. Can the... Um... Well, actually, if we do that, will I get money back if I just delete you? No. Oh, that's not good. Do I not get money back? I'm just going to get smart. Okay. And then ingredient filter. Can I only have one ingredient? Oh, that's going to be annoying. Yeah, I can only have one ingredient. Big... Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so I guess I'm going to move that because we're going to use it somewhere else. And then this one can go back in here, which means that I just need to have a conveyor belt on this side, I think. Yes. And then we're going to basically output from a grill two different ways. And we're going to detect only the cooked ingredient from the grill, which means we need one of these. And one needs to go this way. Uh, yep. And then the other one is probably going to go that way. OK, and this one needs to be set to an L, I think. Again, I can't remember. I can't see which way around these are. It'd be nice if you get some kind of indication on the screen. However, this one is going to go for our toast. OK, and this one is just going to go for our uh, crispy bacon strips. OK, and then we can just put a grill down. And then maybe some kind of dispenser uh, ingredients and then another couple of dumb robot arms. OK, and there and two dispensers. Will this go over the budget? Not yet. We've only got five grand left, however, and then if I put Another order uh, thing in here. We might go over. Let's try, try and put an order reader. And yeah, we're 250 over. Oh, right. We may have to optimize this in a little while. However, let's give this a go and see if this works. So dispense. Um, this is going to be, was this the toast? Why well, it doesn't really matter. This is the input. So this is going to be bacon strips. Okay. And this one is going to be bread. Bread slice. Yep. 
easy. Both of those are going to come out. Oh, but on this order dispenser, we're going to basically configure this to connect to you and connect to you. But a different thing here. We need two bread slices this time, not just one. And we need just one bacon strips. So, uh, yep, let's do that. And these will both go on there. And only when they're cooked should they get pulled off here, at which point they should get dumped onto relevant conveyor belt. So that should go there. That should go there. And we are $750 over. Um, well, <laughs> can I save anything without... With, uh, how do I get money back? That's, that's no good if I don't get the money back from deleting stuff. Uh, well, we don't definitely need that one. We can move everything up one because this robot can grab it from that conveyor belt just fine. Um, is there any other way of saving here? Um, hmm. Oh, you do get your money back. I can get 250 back by moving stuff around. Okay, maybe I was wrong previously. Okay. So, <laughs> we've got some, but we are still over budget. So, this is not not going to go too well. Um, it would be wonderful if I could just set this robot arm to just do two things, but it seems like I can't. That's annoying, and yeah, that's not going to help me. Ah, maybe I'm being a little bit stupid here, but we don't necessarily need two of these order readers. Take one, delete it, because we can connect up to four things on one order reader. You can't do any more than four, but you can do four. Okay, so bacon strips, we're just going to set this to perform action, uh, whoops, not three times, one time. And on the bread slice, uh, that's back to two again. There we go, okay. And we've got one order reader here. So, uh, things have been rearranged a little bit. This is now set to straight, you'll see it's going this way. And it's going to go onto this side here. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually going to work too well, but uh, we'll see. Um, because this is one sort of conveyor belt. Let's give it a start and let's see what happens. So we're waiting for an order to come in. Okay, let's go into normal play mode. Let's see what happens. So there goes our lettuce. Okay, so this this rub arm is obviously not configured correctly. So I want to go. Um, it's going to go for its, from its input out to the right. So I just need to go and yeah, there we go. <laughs> it does have an indication. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm just being uh, being stupid again. Okay, so you uh, are you set to straight? You are set to straight. So let's say left. Okay, and there we go, like that. That's much better. Once I can just see this way, it makes it easy to configure. Let's start it again, and let's just go forward until we get an order. Okay, and start playing it. So the lettuce is being grabbed. Slice is being grabbed. Okay, that looks like it's working. So far. Oh, would you look at that? Is that now working? It's going to serve an order? Um, assembling? Looks like it. So, we're going to have to uh, deliver five dishes, and our energy used is going up. Our ingredients should still be within range, because we're controlling all of them. So that hopefully shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we haven't got any wastage there. What we will have wastage is with the energy. We don't have this grill, we can't control it, because to do that will go over the budget. And uh, because we'd need a second order reader to turn the grill off. So, we're just going to get all those grill, all those options. Let's fast forward it. And let's see if we get within budget. Yep, we succeeded. Good. So money spent is thirty thousand two hundred fifty. I thought it had a. I thought it had to be. No, oh, no, we don't have to spend money. Okay, that's fine. Just say, just says this is the actual success criteria. Fine, no problem. Efficiency is seventy one percent. Good. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Let me know in the comments below if you want want to see more of this game, uh, Automa Chef. And we can obviously go through the campaign. There is also another mode. There's a contract mode, sort of like a challenge mode. You're getting given a challenge. It isn't going from from you know mission to mission like this. And you'll see there's there's quite a lot of 
stuff in the campaign. The final course is down there. However, in the contracts mode, you can basically say, um, you can create a company, I've called this Mojongs. Um, with that logo, imagine little little sort of tiles, somewhat like, um, that have numbers on them, and uh, you put them end to end, and uh, they deliver you pizza. Well, in this case, you have Mojongs who uh, would, <laughs> would then uh, get another sort of uh, delivery service to you. However, you get a different option. So here you're going to get an inbox with certain things. It's going to give you uh, basically a payment and say, say, you know, what you get for bonuses and efficiency targets, etc., and lots more recipes. So this it seems a lot more complex than the uh, than the, the campaign mode. So the campaign seem, seems to be the first one to actually go for, and uh, you can go from there. And of course, there's full mod support with the Steam Workshop, uh, of which there are already a few additions, even a couple of days in. Uh, a few different like, like types of burgers and, and sandwiches and stuff like that. And then the scenario editor and test sites, etc. So, yeah, that's it for the moment. So hopefully you get a taste of the game and do let me know what you think. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time for some Automa Chef.